Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of Numbers chapter 33. We're going to take a look at a prophecy that is coming to pass. Now, if you haven't listened to parts one and two, I suggest you do so. Now, earlier, the children of Israel under Moses had left Egypt and they were went through the wilderness of sin and they went through the desert and they're getting ready to go into the promised land. So let's go, Numbers 33, verse 38. And Aaron, now Aaron was the uh, Moses' brother. They were of the tribe of Levi, which God set apart, sanctified, as being the priests. They served God in the tabernacle. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor, at the commandment of the Lord, and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the fifth month. Remember, God had them wander through the desert for forty years, and that generation died. Well, now there's a new generation, because God was trying to take... Physically, God took them out of Egypt, but spiritually, he was trying to take Egypt out of the children of Israel. So, verse 39. And Aaron was an hundred and twenty and three years old when he died in Mount Hor. And King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. Now, if you don't know who the Canaanites were, the Canaanites were of Ham, Noah had three, chill, uh, three sons, Shem, which was the chosen seed, Japheth, and Ham. And Ham was the uh, people, they settled in Ethiopia. They settled in Egypt, which God was trying to take them out of. And they settled in the land of Canaan, which is what... God had promised Israel. Now, the thing is, I've got a playlist, the angels that sinned, the, and the uh, on Genesis chapter 6, and the giants, and what have you. It's real simple. The fallen angels intermarried with the women in Genesis 6, before the flood, and also after the flood. I mean, after all, who did David, King, future King David, who did he face when the giant named Goliath? Was he just, David, just some little midget looking at a, an NBA player? No. No. Goliath was a giant. They were at least 9 to 12 foot tall, at least. They have found giant skeletons all over the world. In America, uh, they found them in Greece, they found them in China, they found them all over the world. But they hide them because, you know, they don't want us to know. I mean, Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack the Giant Killer. You know, it's every culture in the world has legends of giants in past history. They were hybrids, the fallen angels and the human women. And that is why God commanded Israel to exterminate the Canaanites. Because the giants were the Philistines and they were one of the tribes of the Canaanites. Now, I don't believe all the Canaanites were giants, but at least some of them were. 
they were satanic hybrids. Which is why, if you don't believe that, then believe that the God of the Old Testament is a homicidal maniac because he commanded all the, Old all the uh, Canaanites to be exterminated, to be destroyed. So you got a choice. Either God, your God that you claim to follow is a homicidal maniac, or they were satanic hybrids. And I believe the satanic hybrids. So let's take a look. Oh, uh, let's skip down to verse 48. And they departed from the mountain of Abiram and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. And they pitched by Jordan from Beth Jeshimoth even unto Abel Shittim in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by, Jericho, uh, by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all, all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. So he wants you to destroy all their, their, the images, their pictures, their, their molten images, their idols, and all their high places. Uh, Satanists love to be on top of the high places and worship their god, which is Lucifer. Verse 53, And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein. For I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the, the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth, according to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. Um, have you ever heard of drawing straws? Well, that's basically how the lot works. Um, I guess they, I don't know exactly how they did it, but but if you've ever driven uh, drawn straws, that's basically whoever whoever got whatever territory it was by, well, you could say it was by chance, but I'm sure the Lord's hand was involved. Now, verse 55. Here is the future prophecy. But if, there's that if, boy, there's a lot of ifs in God's word. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. So, when the Lord says drive them out, um, he's not talking about getting a, a Greyhound bus and letting them, you know, fill it up and, you know, giving them a, a, a ride, you know. He's talking about either killing them all or having them leave. Now, after Moses had died, remember Moses had uh, displeased the Lord and he was not, he was allowed to look at the promised land, but he wasn't allowed to cross over to go into the promised land. That fell to Joshua. And if you listen to the Jews, they're going to tell you it's Yeshua. But personally, I think it's Joshua. I think that's the pronunciation. But hey, what do I know? I'm just some dumb Bible-believing Christian, right, to them. Um, personally, I think Jews often mispronounce words so that you don't make the connection you don't make the connections between the Old and the New Testament. 
So let's read Joshua chapter 23, verse 1. Joshua was the leader that took over from Moses. And it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. Verse 2. And Joshua called for all Israel and for all their elders and for all their heads and for all and, uh, and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. What nations? The Canaanite nations, the heathen satanic nations. Verse 4, Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight. And ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep, to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn out aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. In other words, don't veer off to the right, don't veer off to the left. Go straight ahead. Okay? Verse 7. That ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. Oh, yeah. Don't learn about uh, Ishtar, Easter, and, uh, you know, Baal and Ra, and, uh, you know, there was a whole bunch of them. Don't swear by them. Don't serve them. Don't bow yourselves unto them. Why? Because you're serving the devil. You're not serving God. You're serving the devil. Verse 8. But cleave unto the Lord your God as ye have done unto this day. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. Verse 10, one man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised you. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Else if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them with them. So God doesn't want us to have marriages with these heathens. And shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you. Listen carefully. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns thorns in your eyes until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. What happens if you got thorns in your eyes? You're blind. Didn't Jesus tell certain groups of people that they were blind? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to get back to that. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 15. We're talking about the blind and thorns in your eyes. Matthew 15, verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees. Now, if you don't know what a Pharisee is, the Pharisee is a Jew. It's a denomination of the Jews. All Pharisees are Jews. Maybe not all Jews are Pharisees, but all Pharisees are Jews. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? 
for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Is there anything wrong with washing your hands before you eat? No, mom always told me, oh, wash your hands. But is it because her hands were dirty or is there like a certain ritual to it? Oh, you gotta wash your hands, wringing them a certain way. And if you do it the other way, well, then that's unholy. I, you know, I'm not exactly sure. Verse three, but he, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus, have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition? In other words, if somebody cursed their mother and father, the Bible says they were supposed to die. But these Jews are saying, oh, well, you know, if you take a hammer and you bash in your parents' heads, it's a gift. And they're free. They're, they're free of the law. They're, they're not to be die the death. You know, that's... That's basically it. And this is a thing called the Babylonian Talmud. Talmud means learning, so it's the Babylonian learning. Mystery Babylon, maybe. I don't know. But ye say whatsoever ye say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or the mother. He shall be made free. Thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, The people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear, and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Oh, don't you know, Jesus, you offended those poor Jews. How, how could you do that? Are you an anti-Semite? Oh, well, that's the Bob translation. Never mind. Verse 13, But he answered and said, This is Jesus speaking, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Now, if you want some more, you could read Matthew chapter chapter 23. I'm just going to read a few excerpts. Now, remember, a Pharisee is a Jew. Matthew 23:16. Woe unto you, ye blind, blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear that by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. In other words, when you swear by the temple of God, it, it doesn't mean anything. But if you're swearing by the gold of the temple, oh, well, then you got to keep your vow. You know. Yeah. What, 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 what is these uh, people, what's the important thing to them? The gold. Not the temple. Not God's house. The gold that's in God's house. Verse 17. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? Skip to third, uh, verse 19. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Verse 24. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Verse 26. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them 
may be clean also. Blind. Oh yeah, they have eyesight. But spiritually, they're blind. All right, let's take a look at Matthew, I'm sorry, book of John. John, John chapter 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And the disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Have you ever heard that? Oh yeah, something bad happens to you, it's because you're being punished by God. Well, let's see what Jesus says. Jesus answered, verse 3, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents. Now, they're not, he's, Jesus isn't saying the, neither his parents nor this man had, had never sinned. He's not saying that. For, because the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's in the book of Romans. And I'm one of the chief ones. I'm an expert on uh, doing things that God hates. Not so much lately, but in times past. But what he's saying is, this man's not blind because of anything he or his parents did. Okay? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay to the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went uh, he went his way thereof and washed and came seeing. So here it is, this guy's been blind since birth, and now he can see. The neighbors, therefore, when they had before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. You see, Jesus said, Go to the pool and wash. And if the man had faith, which he did, he went and did as Jesus said. Is this works salvation? No. But it, it, it's faith. If Jesus tells you to do something, you do it. You're not, well, I got my eyesight because I earned my sight by washing my eyes. That's what people that rail against what they call lordship salvation will tell you. Oh, you he earned his eyesight by doing something. No. No, he did it because Jesus told him to do it. That's called faith. Okay? He told him, go to the pool of Siloam, wash. And he went, he did it, and he received his sight. That's faith. That's not works. That's faith. Then said they unto him, where is he? And he said, I know not. So, you know, where's Jesus? Uh, I don't know. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Oh, boy. See this, the Jews will tell you, Jesus is a sinner because he did this on the Sabbath day. How dare he? Uh, did Jesus make any money doing this? No. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others say, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Praise the Lord. There were some Jews that actually realized, how, how can this man do these miracles except God be with him? Duh! They said unto the blind man, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. 
But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, whom ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, Now this is wisdom, people. This is wisdom. His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth? We know not. Or who hath opened his eyes? We know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. In other words, he's an adult. Talk to him. What are you asking us for? We weren't there. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Sound familiar? Therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. Ooh. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. All right, let's go back to verse 26 again. So here it is, the Jews are talking to the blind guy, who was blind. Then said they to him again, What did he, what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So not only this, this guy that was blind knows that if you're going to be a worshiper of God and you do the will of God, that when you make a prayer, God hears you. Verse 32. Since the world began as it was not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind. If this man was not of God, he could do nothing. Ooh. But what did the Jews say? Verse 34, They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Isn't that funny? Those with a sight are blind, and him that was born without sight can see the truth. Jesus heard, verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see, oh, I'm sorry, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. 
And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Let's take a look at John chapter 12, verse 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk ye, walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be the children of light. Okay. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Verse 37, John 12, 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they did not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he, who is he? God. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things saith Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me, should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not, for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak thereof, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. All right, let's go back to Joshua chapter 23 and verse 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God, else if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. What nations? The satanic nations, the Canaanites. Even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth, and ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all the all evil things until he have destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God which he commanded you and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourself to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given 
unto you. America, are you listening? America used to be full of Christian churches. Now it's full of synagogues, Buddhist temples, Bahia, mosques, people that just don't believe. You know, and uh, people, Americans are, are going for all this. I know I was one of them. I mean, I considered myself a Buddhist at one time. I was into the New Age. I was into all that junk because I looked at the garbage that the churches had taught. But I had never read the Bible for myself. I had just listened to the preachers up at the pulpits. You know, the uh, 501c3 business with the name church in it. You know, it could be First Baptist Church of... Uh, boo, boo, Balula, 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 USA, or blah, 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 whatever. You know, most of these churches are businesses, and they don't, they don't teach what the Bible teaches. They pick and choose a few things here and there, and that's about all they do. You know, but if I'd have read what the Bible really said, and the, the members... They would know that the uh, TV preachers are lying to them. So, what can I tell you? Let's take a look at uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Corinth was a city in Greece. All right, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You know, when people don't want to hear God talking to them, God will God will let them stay blind. You know, didn't Christ say that we had to come unto him just like little children? And what do little children do? They... they they cling to their parents, and they learn. And that's what that's how God wants us to be. You know, we're supposed to sit at the feet, like the disciples did, sit at the feet of Christ and learn. But it's just, it's amazing. Uh, you know, every time I think I've heard all the parasies, somebody comes up with a new one. Verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that's your body, people, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are all, all way delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us, with you. 
for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right, well, this is going to be the end of part three. And Numbers 33, I'm telling you what, it's getting ready to come to pass. Uh, America has forgotten the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the only begotten Son of God, which is Jesus, who is the Christ, uh, the Messiah. America falls, follows after every wicked thing that you can think of. And God has withdrawn his support and protection. And America is going to be severely judged. I know there's people running around saying America's Babylon. America's part of the system, but America's not Mystery Babylon. I did an entire study on that. And uh, there's another guy named Chris White. He did a study on Mystery Babylon. You want to listen to a very scholarly study. Look up Chris White, Mystery Babylon. Um, I reached the same conclusion as him, and I thought I did a fairly decent job, but he does a very scholarly job. And if you want to think it's Rome or New York City or Istanbul or Mecca or whatever, uh, check out Chris White and uh, Mystery Babylon. And uh, those of you that listen to me for a while, well, you already know what I think, so or what the Bible says. So, All right, well, this is the end of part three. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that is Jesus, who is the Christ. All glory and praise and honor to him. In Jesus' name, amen.